Hi everyone, and a very warm welcome to this career planning webinar on career planning in an ever-changing world. My name is Karina Schefter, and I'm one of the careers advisors at National College of Ireland. I'm really excited to introduce you, and I expect you will learn all the useful resources and tools that will bring you closer to your desired career. Before we start, I would like to set the expectations clear and just introduce you to some of the learning outcomes of today's webinar. So the kind of things we will explore and learn today are about career planning and how it has evolved in an ever-changing world. We will also look at the features of career planning, such as values, interests, skills, and work environment. We will also look at factors affecting your career decision making, and I will introduce you some future potential steps in your career planning that you can take. I would like to highlight the idea that career planning is a really reflective exercise. So if you do feel like along the webinar, you can't really answer some of the questions, that is absolutely fine. That just simply means that you need to spend a little bit more time reflecting on your skills and values and learn more about career planning. As we go along, I would also suggest if you have an opportunity, just stop for a second in this video, have your paper and pencil next to you and just put some ideas, your values and skills onto it because that will really help and facilitate the reflective process of career planning. Just before we start the next presentation of career planning, I would like to play a short video on career planning in an ever-changing world. There you will see some of the major factors and concepts that we will discuss in today's webinar, and we will unwrap those as we go through the webinar. And I would like you to introduce to this short video.
I do hope you enjoyed watching this short video and I really hope it's provided you with the idea about the different things that we will discuss that does affect your career planning and your career decision making. I would like to first start today's webinar with the following statement. There is a perception that a career is a straightforward, linear path and that you are expected to know what path you need to take upon graduation. This is the kind of statement that I really get to hear when I'm meeting with my clients. I do feel like that majority of the client base is really pressured with the idea that I have selected the degree and by the end of my third or fourth year, I definitely need to know what career path I will take. What I would like to emphasize is that there will be many external factors which you have seen in the video that will affect your career planning. And while it is important that you have all the steps carefully planned out, you just really need to understand that there will be so many factors that will, first of all, affect options available to you upon graduation and the factors that will also affect your career planning. Let's have a look at some of the statistics that will further support this statement. And the first thing is that I would like to highlight the typical length of a job search that is actually 17 weeks. So this is the average result. It doesn't mean that it will apply to everyone that is applying for jobs, but I would like to highlight is that the job hunting and the job search process does not really happen overnight. It is, it is a gradual process and it will take some time. No matter how good your applications are, you need to kind of set the expectations clear that sometimes it can take a little bit of time in order to get there. And the really important next figure is that people do change their careers about five to seven times in their work life. What does tell us again that this is actually a process that we're really trying to move away from the idea that you can have a job for life, that you can stay with the same organization in the same field, and that's due to two factors. First thing, employment market, market keeps fluctuating. At the same time, the more you engage, the more experience and the more opportunities you get along the way of your work life, your preferences, your values and interests will also change throughout your work life. And that basically means that some people would want to switch careers or they would like to find out what people are doing in different departments. That really causes your preferences to change over time. Let's have a look at the word success. And by the word success in this webinar, what we mean is your successful strategic career planning. So let's first have a look what most of people think it looks like. So some people think that this is a really straightforward linear path. And at the same time, on the right hand side, we can see that actually there is a lot of fluctuations and that does really reflect all the external factors that will affect your career planning. We will discuss more of these factors as we go along the next slides. But it's really important just to kind of see on the screen itself that it's not the straightforward line. There will be a lots of ups and downs and it's absolutely fine to expect that and be prepared for those fluctuations throughout your work life. This is all purely because of the idea that we're really living in a changing world. You did hear me saying that there will be a lot of factors impacting your uh, work life and that's really emphasized in even today's life. So for example, the current pandemic that we're living in has really changed the way we see work life. Many companies and many employees around the world had to adapt to a new way of working, which means working from home. That also meant that employees had to um, learn new systems, IT technology, and also to figure out how they can perform their job just basically working from home. Uh, at the same time, it did also cause some changes in the employment market. What you will find that healthcare professionals at the moment feel more pressure in terms of dealing with the capacity of uh, patients. You will also find that research and development organization are pressurized with figuring out the vaccine. So there you kind of will be able to see how the environment really affects 
how the piece of work that you are working in relation to graduate market what we did find so far while it is difficult to predict what will be the impact of the current pandemic but what you will find that many employers had to apply a different strategic approach approach towards their graduate recruitment what you will find that some of the employers have decided to postpone their graduate programs and just offer a contract in a few months time or in a year's time and unfortunately some employers were pressured pressure to cancel those graduate project uh, graduate programs which really serves as a big pressure to many graduates that are about to graduate this year and for example those who were planning to apply for graduate programs or opportunities where you can travel or you will be based in a different country and you will serve as a brand ambassador many of these programs have been cancelled for this year and those graduates who really wanted to get for example in this particular market they had to really adapt and uh, adjust their plans towards their needs and see whether this potential option will be available to them in the future. So this is what's going on in the future. Let's have a look how the employment market and the idea of skills and the need for workers has changed over time. So let's have a look at 1998. So do you remember you have been told perhaps by your parents or by your family members, don't get to the stranger's car. This is what's basically the philosophy of how the world used to work. But let's have a look at 2020. We're literally doing quite opposite to what we've been told many years ago. With the current technology that we have with the applications and phones, we use my taxi application. We get the taxi and literally get into the stranger's car. It just literally shows how the world has changed and the, that we live in. So let's also have a look again at the jobs that did not exist 10 years ago. So as you can see from the slide, there is social media managers, Uber drivers, app developers, data scientists, and influencers. The reason why these jobs did not exist 10 years ago, it's basically because, for example, for a social media manager, there were no appropriate platforms to manage. With app developers, again, there were simply no applications to develop. And with data scientists, what you will find that many of the jobs have evolved and from paper-based resources, we've really moved into cloud and uh, information being stored on different kind of softwares so basically we now these days have really have access to huge amount of data that can be really valued that that can be, be really of a value to many organizations and therefore opportunity like data scientist has emerged so let's have a look what does this mean to us from the perspective of future so there are, again, many different factors that will uh, impact the future. So wireless, we can't really control or we can't really predict what's going to happen in the future. But at the same time, let's have a look at the environmental change. So, for example, plastic in the ocean. That really source the opportunity of the last job that you see on the slide which is a garbage designer so basically this role would involve someone taking all the plastic and just seeing how it can be recycled and put as an interior design for example so that would really address all the pollution in the ocean that we're experiencing at the moment the other profession director of emotional intelligence Emotional intelligence is perhaps the newest and really a term that has emerged within the last few years. What employers get to appreciate and realize that when you work with people and when you work with teams, it's really important to understand their emotions to get the most out of people. And from that perspective, it really gave that opportunity to create this opportunity of emotional intelligence. So by the means of factors, let's move on on to the career planning model. So what we see at the moment is a five step career planning model that is really utilized by majority of institutions across Ireland and UK. 
this is a really simple model put together that does make sense to all clients and therefore we use this as a tool to kind of introduce people and say how they can best manage their career so what i would like to highlight is that it really depends on what stage of the career you're in. So let's say some people can enter this career model with the opportunity. Some people will enter the career planning model with know yourself. It really doesn't matter where you will start as long as you have covered the previous areas before. So as we can see on the slide, know yourself. We would start with this as a first point. So this is the area where a person really is trying to have an honest conversation about themselves with themselves. And you will look at things like values, interest, personality, work preferences, etc. So you really need to know what do you want to get out of your future career? What do you seek and what will give you really that satisfaction and the feeling of fulfillment in the job? Once that area is done, you will move on to opportunities. So you have researched yourself. At the same time, you also need to understand what's going on outside. Who are the key employers? Who are the key uh, career sectors, etc. So you really need to research that side of things. Then choice and getting there, three and four, it's really about the practical application of things. So once you've done research about yourself, once you've done the research about the opportunities, you really need to kind of make a decision, find a potential match with your preferences and work preferences. After that is done, you need to ensure that once you approach those companies and employers that you do have your professional CV LinkedIn done, that you are comfortable with your application, with the interview process, psychometric test, etc. In this webinar, we will briefly touch on this, but I would highly suggest if you are a current student, definitely with all these practical aspects, go back to your career service in your institution and try to get to seek some advice on that matter. At the same time, if you are a graduate or if you don't have access to your career service anymore, there is so much out there in terms of resources and websites available to you. And Grad Island itself is a really good resource where they do suggest and provide information to uh, graduates and job seekers in that regard. And the very last point of career planning is reflection. With any task that we do, it's really important just to sit down and reflect on your journey to see what went well, what could have been done better, because what you will find that considering that people will change their career five to seven times, that you will actually go back to this model. And again, it will depend at what stage you will enter this career planning model, but you will always be in that reflective process thinking what will suit your preferences, how your preferences have changed, what has changed in the market. Is there a new way of, for example, employers selecting candidates, etc. So with all these external factors and fluctuations, you will come back to this model throughout your work life. And it's just quite important to understand at what stage would be more suited for yourself to enter this. So as we go along this webinar, I will unwrap each and every step in more detail. So first thing, we will start with know yourself. So know yourself essentially, as I've mentioned before, in tales of interest, skills, work environment, values, and personality. And as you can see from the picture over here, it really states that, and I really want you to feel the responsibility of your career and understand the idea that career planning actually starts with you. So the very first thing we will look at is your interests. And the kind of things you may want to think about is, what are you good at? Try to look at your interests that can be linked perhaps to academic environment and outside of academia. If we talk outside of academia, so let's say you are, uh, let's call you an influencer in a way, or maybe if you have just an Instagram account or a Facebook account, and what you find is that you really like posting um, 
photos, uh, ideas and tips to your to your followers and you really like the idea of building the followers base and that you really understand what your followers want at the same time once you do that you really understand how social media works you get to access all the data to see how are you performing in terms of managing your social media account from that perspective with the set of skills you learn and with the interest that you have in this particular feed the potential match for you in the future can be a social media manager or digital marketing. So these are the kind of uh, potential matches that you can find in the job market. But now let's have a look at the academic side of things. So when we talk about interest, you can look into the modules that you have enjoyed studying the most, where you naturally felt like you had an interest going to this particular lecture, completing an assignment, and you really felt satisfaction and fulfillment while it's doing that. So if you would like to take a paper and pencil and just to write down some of the modules that you have enjoyed, that already will be a really good starting point because let's say if you have put human resource module on that list, that might mean that potentially in the future you may want to research what kind of career options are available in human resources because many things is just, again, kind of a straightforward path of you being HR manager, but actually HR is much more than that and it involves people uh, for being a part of recruitment and selection process, being part of training and development, being part of uh, reward and motivation, etc. So it's a really huge area that you may want to uh, research if that's, for example, something what you want to do in the future. So I do hope that gives you a little bit of overview how you may want to look into your interests both outside of academia and inside of academia and see if there is a potential match with the job opportunities. The next thing we will talk about is skills. It's a really, really crucial part of your career planning. And I would literally suggest that whoever is watching this webinar, again, to take a pen and paper and just draw two columns. In one column, I would suggest to put word strengths and the other one put word weakness. And try to reflect and think about the skills that you have developed so far, again, related to academia and outside of academia. And while you will put all these uh, skills into different columns, just try to think if you have a good selection of number of skills in your strength section, what that means is that you can find potential match with the jobs advertised in the market that will really um, match with what you have put in your strength column. In that sense, when you will be interviewed by employers, you will have loads of practical examples and you will really feel like you are trying to emphasize to employers that you meet the criteria, that you are really confident about those skills and you would really focus on the strengths of yourself. At the same time, I don't want you to really overlook on weaknesses because if you have a few skills on the weakness column, that basically means that it can help you to identify if there are any potential gaps so let's say you have already thought of a desired job in the future and one of the skills that is required for that particular job is in your weaknesses section. That just identifies that you may want to do some upskilling. It's really great opportunity to do this right now when we're all working from home. What you will find that there is loads of resources available online where you can do online certification. There is things like Udemy, there is a Google Garage Certificate for Digital Marketing, there is HubSpot. So again, I would suggest to go back to your career service and just see if they can give you any um, recommendations in terms of what you can do in terms of upskilling yourself. And in relation to fulfillment and satisfaction of job, if you will go for a job that will only meet the strengths in terms of skills that you have, what it may lead in the future is that if you are, for example, the kind of person who really likes challenges and work, if you're going to go in the job fully matching the requirements, you might eventually get bored with doing that job 
because there is no opportunity for you to develop on or learn new skills. So in that case, it's actually a really good idea to find a balance in a way between your strengths and weaknesses. So once you enter the job and you are the person, for example, who really likes challenges to see if there is any opportunity to transfer basically a skill that you have put in your weakness into strengths column. In terms of reflection of skills, let's reflect on what skills you develop in your degree. Because quite often when I meet again with my clients, they fill out application forms or when we do some reflective exercises, sometimes they find it a little bit challenging to answer what skills they're good at or what skills they have learned. So I have prepared this infographic that summarizes a very little amount of skills because there is definitely much more that you learn, for example, as a student. So <laughs> let's have a look at the journey of you as a student. So the first one we can see is written and verbal communication skills. So these are the skills that you definitely develop and learn when you deliver an assignment. Depending on the nature of the assignment, it can be a presentation where you have to do, for example, as part of the team and that you need to produce a written piece where you have to utilize your Microsoft Office application and use Word and Excel, etc. So just by simply using that one assignment that you had to do in team and that you had to present in front of your classmates, we already take off written and verbal communication skills, teamwork, presentation skills and IT skills. But let's have a look at the learning outcomes. Many of the assignments as you progress in, for example, in your bachelor's degree will be more or less based on critical thinking. So you would need to analyze and evaluate a problem or a case study. And this is why you will really apply your critical thinking. And with any new assignment, it's really about learning because the new assignment, again, once you start reflecting on what you have learned, I am sure there will be so many learning outcomes that you can tick off the list. So learning would be a really big part of it. So now let's have a look at the work environment. So this is pretty much for people to also understand once they more or less have an idea of what job they want to do, they also may want to think, okay, how does the work environment will really affect my um, satisfaction of the career that I have selected? So do you want to think about the fact that do you want to really work nine to five job or would you like to have more or less flexibility? Would you like to work at the desk all the time or would you rather appreciate the opportunity where you need to travel and meet clients or work in the work field? Do you want to have a really good work-life balance, etc.? So you really need to start kind of making those conversations with people who are already in the job and just to get a sense and idea of how this might work potentially for yourself in the future. But this is one of the companies that I would really kind of try and suggest for you to focus on in the future. So now it's really good time again to take a pen and paper and think about the following. What role should I consider? What job will I enjoy doing? What do I seek from career? What career will contribute towards greater job satisfaction? So just take some time to think. Don't worry if you can't answer all of these questions because this is a, an introductory slide towards values. If you do find yourself that you need to take some time to think or you can't really answer the questions, that basically means that you need to look at the concept of values. Values are really important when you look at the career planning and the following slides will really help you to move closer towards a fulfilled and satisfied job for yourself in the future. So first, let's have a look what values are. So basically, values are a set of beliefs that we develop throughout life. If you are watching this webinar with your friend or with a family member, and if you start a conversation about values, essentially what you will find that everyone has different values. 
and that's due to their personal preferences, their experience, etc. But it's absolutely fine if you did find that your values differ. Some values would be more important than others. So again, if you do a reflective exercise and you put all values on the paper, at some point you may want to give them a priority to put them in a particular order that you feel most important for, for yourself. Values drive behaviors and your choices. They are really uh, important when you select a career and we will look at that in the future slide. Values can result in a greater job satisfaction. Again, it can be linked with uh, you managing your career planning in times of uncertainty really well. It also can mean that your values can match with the values of the company that you want to apply for in the future. And again, this is the topic that we will discuss in the next slide. And what you will find that some values can change over time depending on environment, circumstances and roles. So let's have a look, for example, how values can differ. So what we see in front of us at the moment is a graduate. So let's say as a fresh graduate, you can value traveling, flexibility, exploring new things, etc. So you're really free, you want to explore and you want to learn new things. At the same time, let's have a look at someone at someone more senior in the role. So, for example, that person would like to settle down, get the mortgage, etc. In that kind of perspective, which we will find that values will differ because the more senior person will value stability, will probably focus on progressing in one job to ensure the security and um, the security of that role, so that that person would be able to meet all the desires that that person has reached at that time. But this is just a really good demonstration how values can change depending on the stage of your life. And also it can it demonstrates how different it can be between two different people. So here are some of the examples how values can contribute or impact career decisions. So let's have a look at the first block on the left hand side. An accountant working in a large private practice may value prestige, material benefits and security. So for example, someone else working in the same firm in their own practice may enjoy independence and risk taking because essentially that person doesn't work for anyone. They do have that flexibility, but that flexibility and independence comes with a very huge risk. While a third one, who is again an accountant and works in the national charity may gain more satisfaction from working in that field in that field because they are contributing towards a worthwhile purpose because it's a national charity and it's a non-for-profit organization and that person may potentially feel that they are contributing, giving back to society and doing something good. So essentially, we're looking at the same profession, but actually in three different settings and we can see that Many values will differ between the three, but at the same time, all three may equally value variety, responsibility, people contact, and intellectual challenge. So let's have a look how values can benefit you in your career planning. So values can bring you a really huge benefit in times of uncertainty and can give you a really strong sense of identity. So when the times of uncertainty happen and when you are kind of getting to know the job market and there are so many options and opportunities available out there, with someone who does know their values can straight away narrow down the list and really know what they want to target. And they will do that with a really strong sense of identity because they will know what kind of things to put on their application form and they would perhaps would manage really well that question why do you want to work for us or why are you interested in this position 
At the same time, they can be a better organizational fit. And this becomes really a valuable thing, especially when you are um, doing an application form or when you are attending an interview. Quite often, employers will ask, again, why do you want to work for us? And if a person is really familiar with their own values, and have done research about the company, they can potentially find if there is a match or a link between their personal values and the values of the employer. When you combine both, this is where it really brings so much more um, confidence in your answer and provides a really good response to that question. The last thing in terms of benefits, it really helps you to uh, do craft and create really well uh, informed career decision making and that can really help you with informational interviews. In terms of informational interviews, what they are. So I do get approached again quite often by my clients and they say, well, there will be an excellent um, career, uh, career fair, employer fair, but you know what? I don't really know what am I supposed to ask employers. So I would say definitely use your values to craft and create those powerful questions. So when you approach employers, you don't ask the most common questions like, do you recruit uh, IT students or do you recruit marketing students? Rather, use this as an opportunity to get meaningful and powerful information out of employers that will help you personally to make a decision. So let's have a look at this particular example where a person X values colleagues. Okay, so the kind of questions that person would want to ask employers is how often do you get to work with others? That can be really much linked to the idea of colleagues. It will give you an idea of how much you will interact with your colleagues in the workspace. Are there any team projects in your role? Again, if the role kind of mainly is focused on a person working individually, but occasionally there are opportunities to engage with other colleagues, with other team members and work together to achieve a certain um, aim. How do you find working with other people in the company? So this is, sometimes it can be a quite a tricky question to ask, but at the same time, it will really provide you a really good idea of how it is like to work in that company and if people are genuinely nice in that company and what do you see yourself working in that particular company. So the next thing I would like to talk about is personality. So there are many career theories that suggest that there is a really strong uh, connection between a person's personality and the work environment. And I would say this is a very good starting point for someone who is really new to career planning and can't really um, find the right approach or ask the right questions in terms of get to know their personality and preferences. So I would definitely suggest to look into this particular personality feature of career planning model. So now let's think about the following. So let's try to think, how do you make career decisions? Where and how do you learn about careers? How do you, who do you look up to in terms of careers? Do you seek advice from others about careers? So as you can see, all of these questions are pretty much based on your career decision making and where do you source information. With that in mind, again, if you did find this a little bit challenging to answer these questions, that's absolutely fine. But that simply means that you need to look into biases and in career decision making. So now let's have a look at the next video that will tell us a little bit more about biases in career decision making.
All right, so I do hope it did provide you some idea about biases in career decision making. And what I really would like to emphasize is the three questions that you can see in front of yourself. So there were a few examples provided over there about stereotyping, about halo effect, about present knowledge, and just try to think, do you recognize any biases in yourself? And have any of these biases affected you in the past? And how can you manage or adapt your behavior? What you can potentially do that will not affect your career decision. So one particular example I would like to give is the uh, halo effect. So this is when your previous negative experience can really uh, limit you from selecting that particular career sector or particular job in the future. So let's say a person X who has spent uh, a big proportion of their life or childhood in hospital and that was related to some health problems for example that negative experience may in a way limit person to look at any potential career in the future that would be related to healthcare system and this is just the implication of that negative experience an unfortunate experience at the same time it can be a great opportunity for someone to get involved into that sector but in a way it doesn't mean that you have to switch or you need to uh, change your decisions completely what I would really would love if you can just try to first thing understand how you make decisions just try to think if that's for the best or for the worst for yourself as long as you have full awareness this is where you can really make a really well informed career decision making and now we are switching towards second part of the career planning model which is exploring opportunities it's really about researching what's available there in the market and it will really prepare you for your third and fourth uh, step of career planning model which is making decision and getting there so let's briefly have a look of what's available out there in the market so research is really key in this regard and one of the first resources i would like to highlight is Grand Island Career Sector section on their website. I do find this really, really useful. There's loads of resources allocated to each and every second sector. And I really like the wide variety of resources that they have. So if you do have access to internet and you really wish to research and understand sectors that are available in employment market to see what sectors are developing, what sectors are experiencing uh, particular challenges, and what sectors require a particular set of skills. So you would educate yourself about what's going on in that particular area, and you can prepare accordingly. So you can see the link at the bottom over there, and I would really suggest to check this resource. As it was seen in the video is that you need to confirm the information that you read and explore. So another resource for career sector is careerportal.ie. They have a really nice section on career sectors and it's pretty much the same idea. It's just that I would just more or less go with the idea of never use one resource, try to research as many resources as you can so you can see if the information matches and whether some further research needs to be done. So this is in relation to career sectors. The other important thing is skills. You can also conduct some research related to that to see what skills will be in demand in the future. Well, as you've seen from the very first video, emotional intelligence, IT skills, all these skills will be really highly regarded in the future. But just considering that we're based in Ireland and Ireland has also have specific aims and targets to achieve as, as, as a country. So from that perspective, it would be a really good idea for you to go onto the original skills website and just see what's going on, what kind of skills will be in demand in the future and how you could potentially get there. Some of you may also choose to do a postgraduate study. So the reason I have put this slide over here is because I do find that quite a big proportion of undergraduate students decide to go on to further study and uh, that is potentially seen as another option. 
So if you are a person who would like to uh, complete a postgraduate study, the kind of questions you need to ask yourself is, what institution would you like to study? And you need to have, in a way, a list of your own requirements. Because again, there's so many institutions available out there, you want to narrow down a list. For some people, location will be important. For some people, would be ranking. For some people, fees or, uh, or scholarship opportunities. So ensure that you have a clear selection criteria for yourself. If you would like to do master's in research or perhaps a PhD, the other three additional important things you need to consider in this process is you need to have a really good idea on the topic you want to do. You need to find a supervisor who will be happy to work with you on that particular topic. And once these two are done, Together with your supervisor, you will look at some funding opportunities because while there will be some PhDs that will be advertised and would be available to open competition, at the same time, there will be some PhD opportunities where you would need to seek funding externally. And for example, the biggest tool uh, pool, for example, for Irish students is the IRC funding for PhD, and that is open to all disciplines. So again, if you're planning to do a PhD, I would highly suggest to look into irc.ie website. With in relation to master's program, if you would like to see what's available out there, I just prepped two resources for your attention. One is called Fine Masters and the other one is Grand Ireland Postgraduate Catalog. Again, you just type in the keywords from, from the perspective of what you want to study, and then you will be introduced to a list of all institutions across Ireland that offer that particular course. Fine Masters also provides um, institutions across UK in that regard. So now with the very practical side of career planning, choice and getting there, it's really about you making that decision. And this is where biases in career decision making is really important. Not only you need to know your own preferences, knowing what is available in the market, you also need to understand the whole process of decision making. What you will find that a lot of people make decisions differently, and that is absolutely fine. What you really need to do is just take your time and just accept the risks, accept the different opportunities that come along the way, and be open and really start applying for things. And again, if you really feel you need some support for those practical things, such as CV, LinkedIn, application form, psychometric tests, please refer to your career service. At the same time, just use the research. There is many, many uh, resources available online. So from the perspective of career planning model, we looked at the four important steps. So how can you actually manage this whole process considering that there is uncertainty, we don't have much control over things? So the very first thing I would say, again, be aware and keep researching. If you really uh, stay in a bubble and you don't get exposed and you don't really get to learn what's available in the market, you can't really fully prepare in that regard. But being online, just checking the news, doing your research would really provide you with that important information that can be one of the features of your own career decision making. At the same time, I would say be open to opportunities. As you've seen in the video, each time you engage and interact with a particular uh, opportunity, it changes the way you think about things because you get to experience them firsthand. You also get to learn new things that, for example, you have never heard of. So being open and just saying yes to think is quite key as long as it doesn't harm you in any way. Uh, and the other thing, avail of support. If you are a student and if you have a career service, they do have resources, they have years of experience, and you can have that conversation with them about what you can potentially do to manage your career. Is there any particular resource you may want to look at, et cetera? And the very last thing is, Focus on continuous professional development. So this is really highly regarded by employers. Quite often you will see in job description, 
they will mention that they would like to see applicants who uh, are looking after their continuous professional development and at the same time you will only benefit if you will focus on that particular field because you will only develop and learn new skills which again will benefit you in the future so remember we've looked at the career planning model okay so now let's just try to think how it works in an ever-changing world so as you can see on the screen there are some new features that introduced to the career planning model so if we look at risk and as i was saying before say yes to opportunities essentially that means that you need to take a risk by going into something that for example you haven't really planned to go into or you have never heard about this particular area but you are curious so when other word curiosity comes in you're curious to explore what's available out there at the same time you're showing some flexibility so for example someone who well, is enabled to apply for grad programs with opportunities to travel, they essentially need to demonstrate that flexibility to wait and apply for some other opportunities where they can gain valuable experience. And when the time comes, they will go back on their career trajectory. At the same time, as I was saying, it takes uh, around 17 weeks to, um, to apply for jobs. So it's really about persistence and optimism. So these things don't really happen overnight. And this is a process. And what, what you really need to focus on is, even though there was some, um, some moment where you didn't hear back from employers or you did hear back and it was a negative response, I really encourage you to take some optimism and keep going apply that persistence because there is definitely an opportunity for you and you really need to keep going and just showcase the best of yourself and just keep going so with the reflection let's have a look at does the job i have selected match my values do i have skills to perform this job are there any factors that can affect my career choices that I should be aware of. So essentially, this is the very last uh, feature of career planning model. And as I was saying, once you go through the career planning journey, you need to look at what was good about it, what are the things that you probably want to, um, to work on in the future. And if at the moment, when you were watching this career planning webinar, you already had a plan in mind, try to answer these questions. Again, if you do find it challenging to answer those, that basically means that you need to go back through some slides, do a bit more reflection, and most importantly, you need to have a really good uh, action plan. So I have developed a really good action plan that I do find really works with students, and this action plan is really focused on action points. It will provide you a list of different action points, and there you can identify the resources that you need to complete that specific action points. Uh, you can also list some uh, some uh, action points that will help you to to achieve that particular action point and at the same time it's also important to put a timeline towards that particular action point so at the end of this seminar you would be able to download your personal action plan in the same section where you have access to this webinar so as you can see it really provides you the action points at the top and then you just pick and choose the appropriate sections as you need at the same time what I would like to say this is just a, su a suggestion if you do feel like there is something missing in the action plan you're more than welcome just to scrubble in and just to use according to your own needs I do find this works really well and it's just a really nice thing to ensure that you can act upon this webinar okay so you do have that practical action plan that you can implement and that will really help you to come closer to a career where you can really where you can really seek that fulfillment and uh, satisfaction so we have come to an end of career planning in an ever-changing world I really hope that you have enjoyed watching this webinar, that it has provided you resources and tools that will really help you in your career planning. And uh, I wish you best of luck and uh, thank you for watching.